Thank you for joining us at the Roundtable. Brought to you by Community Education Arts, a nonprofit organization based in Noblesville, Indiana. I'm Alice Cavanis Gober, President of CE Arts. And I'm Sarah E. Morin, Secretary of CE Arts. Let's sit down at the Roundtable. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us at the round table. We are Community Education Arts and we are delighted to be exploring the yellow wallpaper in today's workshop. Uh, I am Sarah E. Morin and I am here with Alice Kavanis Gober and with Deborah Peterson and possibly some others as they, they connect to our online Zoom room. <laughs> So we have with NICE, which stands for Noblesville Interdisciplinary Creativity Expo, we always pick four works of classic literature, usually books, but in this particular year, we also have a short story. And what we try to do is take a deep dive into them, maybe connect to them in a way that we haven't since high school. Um, whether we have positive or negative memories of these classics, we try to breathe fresh life into them and see how are those pertinent to us today and how can they inspire us as artists. And so I would love to turn it over to, to you, Alice, to talk a little bit about the yellow wallpaper. And I'd also like to welcome Chris to the room. Welcome, Chris. You're welcome to unmute if you want, because we, we always like to be as nice as possible. And if you want to shout out anything, you're welcome to. So you can unmute if you like. Yeah, or you can drop it in the chat. Yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm sort of going to give a little bit of a background and, and uh, some, some ideas for this workshop for the yellow wallpaper. It is a short story, like Sarah E. said. It was published in 1892, originally in the New England Magazine. And it's considered an important early work of American feminist literature because it illustrates 19th century attitudes towards mental and physical health of women. So as you're reading it on your own and creating your inspired pieces or whatever, you can pretty much count on these as being themes that you're going to find in the book. The patriarchy versus women. The role of women in the 1900s, postpartum depression, insanity, real and labeled by society or others, patient-doctor relationships, and that can include things like trust and abuse, etc. There is racism, artist therapy. We've got a lot going on in this book, and the reason racism's in there is a little bit not obvious, but we'll get to that. Um, I want to give a very brief, brief, I can't even talk, brief author bio. <laughs> That's too many F's and THs <laughs> of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. She was born the 3rd of July in 1860, and she died the 17th of August in 1935. And kind of keep that date range in your mind as we talk about this book, because sometimes the books that we look at are so well written and so classic that we kind of forget that they are from a different time period. Um, okay, anyway, Miss Charlotte in 1884, she married an artist named Charles Walter Stetson, and they had one child, Catherine Beecher Stetson, uh, the following year. Now, Gilman suffered from terrible postpartum depression for several years. She was put into the care of a well-respected doctor named Dr. Mitchell, Silas Mitchell, by her husband, interestingly enough, of course. And under Mitchell's care, she could not leave her bed, read, write, sew, talk, or feed herself. Oh boy. <laughs> this was called a rest cure. After nine weeks in um, his, in Mitchell's facility, she was sent home with these instructions from her doctor. Quote, live as domestic a life as possible. Have your child with you all the time. Lie down an hour after each meal. Have but two hours intellectual life a day. And never touch pen, brush, or pencil as long as you live. End quote. Okay, she tried for three months to follow his advice, but her depression worsened. Imagine that. And she came close to full emotional collapse. She displayed suicidal behavior. 
She talked about pistols and chloroform. Her husband recorded a lot of this in his diaries, and her own diary entries covering several years after giving birth describe her depression and how it worsened. Eventually, Gilman and Stetson decided to divorce, and Charlotte and then three-year-old Catherine spent time away from Stetson, and imagine this, her depression began to lift. Her, she and her daughter moved to Southern California, where, interestingly, Charlotte met and had a serious relationship with a woman named Adeline Knapp called Dell. And Gilman believed that with Dell, she had found a combination of loving and living, which she had not found in her marriage with Stetson. Unfortunately, the relationship with Dell didn't last, but at least she had that short period of having a good relationship. Also around that time, she became active in several feminist and reformist organizations. Now, Gilman always said that the idea for the yellow wallpaper came from her own experience with this rest cure that Dr. Mitchell had her um, partake in. And in her own words, she said, quote, the real purpose of the story was to reach Dr. S. Weir Mitchell and convince him of the error of his ways, end quote. She also said, quote, that the wall, yellow wallpaper was not intended to drive people crazy, but to save people from being driven crazy, and it worked, end quote. She sent the book to Mitchell, but received no response. And as, as, as late as 1908, 16 years after the yellow wallpaper was published, Mitchell was still doing his rest cure and trying to create entire hospitals devoted to the rest cure so that his treatments would be even more widely accessible. Uh, he is not my favorite doctor in history, that's for sure. Um, in 1893, Gilman moved back east to New York City, where she recontacted her one of her first cousins, Hooten Gilman, whom she had not seen in about 15 years. They actually became romantically involved and got married in 1900. And in 1922, they moved to Hooten's old homestead in Norwich, Connecticut. He died suddenly in 1934 from a cerebral hemorrhage, and Gilman moved back to California, where her daughter lived. In January of 1932, she was diagnosed with incurable breast cancer. A longtime advocate of euthanasia for the terminally ill, Gilman died of su by suicide on August 17, 1935. She took an overdose of chloroform. In both her autobiography and her suicide note, she wrote that she chose, quote, chlor chloroform over cancer. She died quickly and quietly. So she had an interesting life. And um, as we talk about the yellow wallpaper, we will, you will see some similarities to her story to what is in the actual story, the yellow wallpaper. She wrote it as a collection of journal entries uh, written by an unnamed woman who has been virtually sequestered in one bedroom as a rest cure. She's been forbidden from doing anything, including writing, so that she can recuperate from what her physician husband, John, calls a, quote, temporary nervous depression, a slight hysterical tendency. The narrator devotes journal entries to describing the wallpaper in the room, its sickly color, its yellow smell, its bizarre and disturbing pattern, like, quote, an interminable string of toadstools, budding and sprouting in endless convolutions, its missing patches and the way it leaves yellow smears on the skin and clothing of anyone who touches it. The woman describes how the longer a person must stay in this bedroom, the more the wallpaper appears to mutate, especially in the moonlight. With no other stimulus than the wallpaper, the woman becomes obsessed with its pattern and designs, and she begins to see a figure in the design, that of a woman, creeping on all fours behind the pattern. Believing that she must free the woman in the wallpaper, the narrator begins to strip the remaining paper off the wall. When her husband arrives home one evening, the narrator refuses to unlock the bedroom door. He gets the key and enters the room. He finds her creeping around the room, rubbing against the wallpaper and exclaiming, I've got out at last in spite of you. Horrified, he faints. The woman, driven mad by confinement and the yellow wallpaper, continues to circle the room, creeping over his inert body each time she passes it. She has become the woman in the yellow wallpaper. 
(laughs) (laughs) I just, you know, this is a really short story, but it's really pretty good. Join us next time as we continue with our workshop discussion for the 2021 NICE Project.